Hey, aloha, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studios for another exciting episode of Security Matters Hawaii. Today we have a very special guest. Maureen Carlo is taking some time out of her busy schedule to visit with us today. She is with, she's the business development manager with BCD Video, and I believe she's coming to us from Chicago, but I'm not sure. Maureen, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, aloha. Me. I'm actually coming to you from way upstate New York. Okay, way upstate New York, how far? Yes. Well, I'm I'm right up on the Adirondack coast, bordering oh. Vermont, and very close to Montreal. Okay, I'm just uh, I'm as far northeast in New York State as you can go. Right on. So, what's well, nice here? Uh, looks like you're in your home office today. So, thank you for jumping in. Um, it's a good thing BCD Video lets you work remotely. I think that's powerful because they're they're headquartered in in Chicago. Is that correct? They, yes, they are. They're in Buffalo Grove, Illinois, which is just north of Chicago. Okay. So I'm one of you know a handful of people who are able to work out of our home office. Nice. And, well, uh, well get... sorry, go ahead. I was, was going to say, amidst spending a lot of time on the road, so oh. I'm thrilled to be in my home office because it's not very often these days that I'm here. <laughs> well, give us, uh, for our audience out there that doesn't know you, give us as much as you care to share, just a little bit of your, your history in the industry, how you uh, got to BCD Video, and then how you ended up here today. Sure. I actually love my story about how I got to BCD Video. I started in the, uh, in the industry as a, an integrator about a dozen years ago. In well, around 2006, I got involved in the industry, selling IP cameras for a Motorola two-way radio house, which um, two-way radios being a, a very male-dominated uh, technology company. So I got involved with a company who um, hadn't done anything with video before. And wow. I worked with some people who, who taught me a lot. And as I was learning IP video, I met Jeff Burgess from BCD Video. Wow. And I was selling, they, they were still called Burgess Computer Decisions at the time. And I was selling their servers. And Jeff Burgess and I, and Tom Larson and I became close throughout the years. And as I migrated from an integrator to working for a manufacturer, I would see them at shows and you know we our friendship continued and and grew and and last summer they offered me a position at their wow. company so i joined bcd video less a little less than a year ago but it's it's been a nice transition as i've watched them grow in the industry and they've watched me grow in the industry and and now we're uh, partnering for success yeah and you have a they have a really strong partnership i know with with dell i'm not sure if you use other oems but are you are you managing the channel globally nationally what's the scope of what you're doing over there so what i'm doing my, my role is actually um uh in the middle of a change right now so oh. my role is throughout north america working with the a and E security consulting community, and okay. also working with organizations. So maximizing my capabilities with um, asso associations, I should say, with associations that we're involved in, ah. such as SIA, PSA, um, security consulting associations, such as IAPSC, security specifiers. So I'm working together with them throughout North America to um, help educate bcd videos on bcd videos message so we can hopefully get involved with the right types of partners and, and grow the <laughs> partnership base that we already have that has been pretty exciting over the last uh, 20 years we're on our 20th anniversary this year actually so um companies growing and we're uh changing roles and moving people around to maximize strengths and weaknesses and i've been working as business development manager in the northeast for the last several months but now with um with some uh, some successes and some industry involvement that I have, it, we've decided that it's it's better to get me out of this small little corner of the country and maximize <laughs> my resources. Ah, so I think that, that that's why you're seeing more of me, and I think why you're getting me involved in this call today. So good, and we're gonna get you out to Hawaii at some point. I'll work on that. I'll work on that for you. Um, <laughs> well, the, you did, you got part of our company there last week, so yeah, we you. had Carl. He did great at our symposium. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. Great. Thanks so much for supporting that. Um, so you talked a little bit about, you know, industry penetration and getting engaged with a lot of these groups that we have. Um, one of the up and coming groups, you know, we have the, the youth, you know, we have Accelerize and we have a youth movement for our industry, but we also have a sort of a gender inclusion um, uh, uh, effort going on across a lot of different organizations. And I know you're, you're uh, deeply involved with SIA and what they're doing there with the uh, uh, Women in Security Forum. So talk a little bit about how that came about or how it got presented to you. Sure. 
Well, the, the Women in Security Forum has just celebrated our first anniversary, which seems, um, it, it seems like we started our, our, our initiative long ago, but we finally put something down on paper about a year ago. So Don Erickson and the Security Industry Association came to me after I became vocal attending Securing New Ground and different conferences that they have throughout the year. And, you know, I, I thought they needed some color up on the stage during the panel <laughs> sessions. And there Instead seemed of to a be bunch a, of bald-headed guys like this? <laughs> with all due respect, listen, there's a lot of color to you and your personality, Andrew. But there, there's also a stereotypical demographic that we have in the yeah. industry. And while, you know, they're, they're great partners to have and, and great leaders in the industry, I also was, you know, vocal that I, I was looking for more. So um, when the Security Industry Association decided to form a group that can really delve into diversity and inclusivity, Don Erickson phoned and asked me, I think I was one of about seven or eight women that he called and asked to be founding members of this. And then they developed a steering committee and we now have 13 people on our steering committee, um, some men and women from, from the industry and all from a, a variety of companies, a variety of roles. So what we've been doing over the past year is really rolling up our sleeves and figuring out what we wanna do, because the, the goal is not to be recognized as another regional social networking club, but we wanna, we wanna have, you know, we, we wanna have activities that are aligning with our goals. So it made us think, what are our goals? Do we wanna be a, um, you know, just something that women can get involved in? Do we wanna be something for women and men? Do, what is our mission? What is our vision? Mm. So we work with a coach to come up with our mission statement and, and our vision statement. And it wasn't easy. Have, have, did you work on your mission statement and vision statement for your company? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And, yeah. We, and, and we redid it about 10 years ago also, So we, because we had more voices that wanted to be included, so we sort of reframed it, yeah. Sure, and I think that's, that's what you have to be able to do, right? It's, you have to be able, it's, it's, it's for now, it's not forever. So we were hearing things about our industry, such as men were told that they're not in, uh, allowed to attend some events that the Women in Security Forum was having. Wow. Well, that's not true. So <laughs> the best time for me to have, well, I know, but I mean, you attend, so you know that's not true. But it was good timing to hear that message because it allowed us to refocus our mission statement to ensure that we didn't just say this is for women. You know, we, we let people know. In fact, I can read, can, can I read it to you? Sure, please. So our, our mission statement is, our mission is to engage all security professionals to promote, recruit, recruit, and cultivate leadership of women for a more inclusive and diversified industry. Yes. So we didn't want it to say just for women, but we know that one of our industry's biggest problems is getting that next generation, whether they're men or women, it doesn't matter who, but getting that next generation of people to join the industry, participate in the industry. So now we're just opening up the, uh, the realm of, of, who we're going after and how we're targeting people to get involved in the industry. But the goal is to empower women and to influence change. And, mm -hmm. and that's what we're working on with the Women in Security Forum. Yeah, and I think we've, we've, in my opinion, missed those voices, right? So there, I think there have been some, tr some traditional roles where we saw women in the industry for many years, maybe an accounting you know, supply side, maybe a little bit in mm -hmm. the marketing space, uh, and definitely in the sales space, you know. But, what about thought leadership? This has been, it's been lacking. There's, there's guys my age and older that seem like, is that they have some monopoly on leadership? I don't think so, <laughs> but they sure don't seem to move out of the way. And we haven't seen women, you know, get rising up to that role. I know we have a, uh, I heard, um, I, I'm not thinking of her name, but the president of Aziz spoke uh, up in Seattle last week on Saturday, you know, which was awesome. So, you know, it's, it, things are maybe starting to happen. I know Christine, my wife, uh, we're just women owned. She was the first woman on the board of PSA in, and they've been around for like 40 something years with that, you know, so this, this thought leadership's missing. And um, uh, do you, do you think that that's uh, intentional? Is it accidental? Is it, is it the guys holding on? Like, you know how some guys have to hug their servers and they won't let go of them. Uh, you know, the <laughs> IT, they won't go to cloud. You know, is it, is it that, is it a power it's thing? They're BCD video servers. I understand why. <laughs> Gotta have them right on. <laughs> um, I don't think it's intentional. Mm. I, I, I don't. I think that things are changing. Okay. I think that 
the dialogue is opening up. I think that women are participating more. Um, why are they participating more? Well, there was a, at Securing New Ground last year, there was a, um, a great panel on stage that Sandy Jones was part of. And when the panel was introduced, it, and I'm paraphrasing here, but they introduced it as, this is the first all women's panel we've had oh. at Securing New Ground. Well, Sandy Jones made a comment that that was a shameful remark. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a panel of leaders and sure. it was you know, a crying shame that it was the first time after all of the years Securing New sure. Ground has happened that it was the first time. So she made me think about that. In, in that comment, because it's, you know, yes, we, it did stand out in the crowd because there was a lot more color on the stage because there were, uh, and there were certainly other panels that women were participating in along with men, but it struck some people as odd to see just women on the stage, but it was really just that they were the right women for the topic at hand. Sure. So as far as women participating more, I, um, I, I did moderate a panel at ISC West that mm -hmm. your wife was part of, but it was a really interesting take on what types of roles women can have in the industry, back to your mm -hmm. question. Yeah. So we had four women-owned businesses, you know, Christine as an integrator, we had Eddie Reynolds as a manufacturer, mm -hmm. Linda Sev, God bless Lynn, who, who does things to facilitate government sales for integrators and manufacturers mm -hmm. that nobody understands better in America, and Rebecca True. Bain, who is a recruiter, you know, a consulting recruiter. So there are four women that do very different types of roles. And we gave them the dialogue, we gave them the opportunity to go in and talk about what they're doing, what led them, let them down their path. But I, I, I took Sandy Jones's um, lead and I introduced them. You were in the audience. I said, you know, yes, you might look at four women on the stage right now, but these are four women leaders in yes. the industry, not four women in security. So I don't want to be bottlenecked into just having that women mm -hmm. label. Good. Um, I talk, I talk to people and they say, we would hire more women if more women were applying for the job. So, you hmm. know, go, going back to your question again, are, are, why haven't there been more women mm -hmm. doing you know, getting leadership types of roles. Well, we're trying to empower women to to change that, but we're also trying to get men as our allies, working with men like you, like, um, you know, there are so many great men in the industry who are very supportive of women and they just want the right woman for the right role. So the more we can have these conversations and maybe at the same time prove the data behind the success rates of having more women in leadership roles, that, that brings up, a different view to people when they think, oh, wow, you mean when there are more women on, on boards that numbers can outperform men or when there is more gender diversity in a company, millennials are happier and they're bringing their friends in to work with them and they're getting more more recruits. So, you know, there's, there's a lot that, that comes with it and dialogues like this, they matter, they make a difference. Yeah, I just finished a book about, a call, it was called Unskirting the Issues, but they talked about the well-intentioned man and th those of us who are aware that that these these biases exist in business, and not not just the security industry, but all industries. And you know, when you announce, oh, an all woman panel, that's it's a panel of leaders. We don't need to point that out. Now, it it, it some people may notice it. That's the bias in their eyes, right? That they're so used to. But um, I'm I'm convinced that that what's going to happen is a is sort of a groundswell of acknowledgement of of different voices different perspectives that we haven't had and, and wherever we can get them from, it's only going to improve the industry. So do you think people's opinions can change? Oh yeah. Are you seeing that? I, I yeah. don't know. I don't know if the, like the, the bias, the bias, the built in bias, you know, from let's just say since the industrial revolution or since the w world war two ended and you know, the guys went back to work and, and I don't know how, I mean, I, it's obvious that men built all these businesses. So they they have all this bias built into them and we've got to work, you know, work to understand what those biases are. The men have got to work to understand where they exist and try to remove them so that we aren't, you know, just blindly biased in the things that we accept. I, I read a, a, a piece about uh, orchestras and orchestras had only less than a 5% female participation, uh, I guess like 20 or 30 years ago. And so what they started doing were blind um, auditions where you couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. And in two decades, now they're 50, 50. So there's a lot of that perception and bias built in. It's, it's not meant to be negative. It just has occurred. And so what we've got to do is work to get 
equity uh, out there in our industry. I, I heard that story about the orchestra yeah. at, at SIA's Honors Night last year. Um, Bonnie, the keynote, she told that story and it was brilliant. I also heard a story at an event a few weeks ago and this woman said that when she wrote her resume for many years, she would not include her first name on the resume, oh. only her initial. Wow. Because when people were calling about the job, when her husband would answer the phone, they just assumed it was him. It was it was a job in a wow. male dominated industry, but they assumed it was him. So she stopped putting her name and just put her initial. Wow. And then her husband had a whole, you know, his whole his whole little pitch that he would give when people would call and assume that it was him. But I thought that was interesting. Yeah. That she she didn't even use her name. Yeah. So there's a lot of that bias we've got to work on. We're gonna cut out to uh, our our. Uh, what do we call them? Our sponsors take about a one minute break and pay some bills and we'll be right back with Maureen Carlo. Thanks. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at three, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation and world and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Hey, aloha and welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. This is Security Matters Hawaii and we're talking with Maureen Carlo from BCD Video. We're talking about women in security. We're talking about inclusion, not diversity. We're talking about inclusion, I think, Maureen. Um, you mentioned something uh, earlier about this, this, um, this discussion, you know, that everyone's having. And we had a, a lot of it up in Seattle, uh, was it two weeks ago at the, at the Microsoft event? And that was initially, I think, sponsored by As Is Chapter, but then SIA got involved and put in a lot of uh, representation. When, when we showed up, there were a couple hundred women there present and not too many guys. So there was a lot of discussion that I think was, was very heartfelt, different, different than the discussion I'm used to hearing. Um, what, uh, what stood out for you about that event? Because it was, I thought, amazing. Well, it was certainly a privilege to participate yes. in that event. Um, thank you to SIA for inviting me to to join them. It you know was open up to everyone in the steering committee to get involved, ah. and I didn't know what to expect. I just knew it was at Microsoft, so there was a lot of peeling going there. I read briefly who the who the presenters were, but they put together such a wonderful job. There was one one discussion in particular that stood out to me. Um, there was a woman from Facebook who gave a presentation on women who travel uh, regularly for a living. Did, did you sit in on that by any I chance? I was not in that one. Okay, so that it was called, What Women to Need to Know About Traveling Safely and Navigating the Corporate Ladder. Mm -hmm. So what was happening is that, yeah, there were mostly women in attendance at this event. And that's atypical with the events that we go to. Um, you know, definitely there were sure. men there, but mostly women there. So th the fact is, we were able to have a different conversation than I've really ever had at, at any event because we were all going through the same thing and the fact that we travel for a living. You know, mm -hmm. some people live in Seattle. I traveled from, from I took a plane from New York City to Washington to, to go to this event. So the fact that women are traveling more for a living is opening up a dialogue about safety and security when we travel. Mm -hmm. sure. So this gal, gave, she has a, she has a two hour presentation she does on this just to show you what a big topic it is. And the presentation that she was talking about giving is one that many enterprise level companies are starting to take mm. to take advantage of. And, and, 
and focusing on the duty of care that employers have mm -hmm. has in some cases become a benefit that's offered. But what it was for me is it was an eye opener talking about best practice when you're in a hotel, when you're in a hotel lobby, when you should never give out your room number at the restaurant when you're signing a bill or when, you know, mm -hmm. in general, what to do best practices when you're in, um, in an Uber or in a, in a, in a ride share program, mm -hmm. when you're on an airplane, how to be more aware of predators, what security measures to take when you're in your hotel room um, and, and locking the door isn't enough. So there mm -hmm. was a great discussion that opened up my eyes to something that you know you travel for a living also your wife travels for a living so many of us travel for a living but different things happen to women who are traveling mm -hmm. regularly from men sure. so that conversation is one that i'm i'm trying to figure out what to do with next it's, ah. it's worthy of it's worthy yes. of being a topic yeah. th throughout our our industry because it's not a conversation that we talk about a lot. We talk about, yeah, you don't always eat healthy when you're on the road. You don't always get your luggage to show up when you do. You don't always get home when you want to get home. But there are a lot of measures around safety and security that we should be concerning ourselves with that men and women should both be having in a dialogue in addition to now the HR departments that are starting to have these conversations. Yeah, I, I think the companies have that responsibility. And if you haven't gotten around some of the larger programs that, you know, the Amazons and Microsofts of the world run and and come up and see what they how deeply they take duty of care to the point of they know where all their travelers are all the time so they don't fly into a war because they're global so they could fly into right. a civil war right. somewhere they could fly into a tsunami or an earthquake or whatever it may be so that that idea of caring for them all the time you know outside of that enterprise space a lot of smbs and to include larger you know medium-sized businesses um don't don't really have programs that are very evolved so i think it's a great conversation and if it starts with the women's security group all the better wherever that conversation's had it's a good thing to have i had an interesting exactly, thing exactly because it wasn't on it wasn't on my radar duty of care wasn't on my radar at all mm, good until this yeah. well now it is so it's awesome <laughs> i had an interesting uh, dis, uh kind of an epiphany that i so i wanted to get your thoughts on this one of the women on saturday during our big roundtable discussion mentioned she's in marketing and she's used to the trade shows and all the guys and she has no trouble and she said that when she walked into that atrium for the greeting that night and there were all those women she felt uncomfortable and oh. I was, for me i was like wow so she immediately found a group of like three guys and so she's all comfortable goes over talking to them and that was just i don't know but she didn't know that about herself so she was just sharing how there was it it was a competitive I, I don't know what what went on for her she didn't elaborate on that but she talked about her own behaviors and the feeling that she had upon arriving there and so I, 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 do you find the women in our industry different to work with than the men or what do you think well, you know, this isn't junior high school where girls can be so catty. <laughs> um, but maybe I, I've always I've always worked for companies where you know currently I'm the only woman that travels on oh, okay. the for, for a living wow. with, okay. with with BCD Video. My my last job, I was the only woman on the sales team, so I'm oh. used to being in events where it's all men, and I I'm quite comfortable with that. I you sure. know I enjoy it, I enjoy it, but I'm I'm used to it. But I had an event, I had a, a dinner planned last year during Securing New Ground. Actually, your wife wasn't able to join us, but all the women that were gonna be on our panel for ISC West's wow. okay. um, session, we all went out for dinner. Uh, so there were four of us. And as we sat down, I looked at the ladies and I said, I have never been out for dinner with just women in the industry. Nice. And wow. I thought, that's really strange. It's never happened before. And I tell you, we had a different dialogue than I typically have over dinner with the men, but it became, a very meaningful dialogue and we really took the time four of us to get to know each other and i'm really sorry christine wasn't there but we all spent time discussing how we got involved in the industry and just really quickly things became like we felt like we were friends not just peers mm -hmm. in the industry and the dialogue changed so i think that when you go to an event like the one at microsoft last week and you see mostly women you know are women working together are they congregating well, for the most part, I think, yes, like we just want, we can support each other in mm -hmm. ways that not all men feel comfortable doing. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, that Friday evening, I was 
having a, a chat with you preparing for this and next thing you know everybody around us that came in for the cocktail event were surrounding us and maybe there were two men there did you feel uncomfortable or did you feel like yay i like i got the best seat in the house how did you feel yeah well i so i um i'm a 49 percent owner so from seven to four, Monday through Friday, that's as much vote as I get all year long because I'm also <laughs> married to my boss. So, you know, in the evenings, it falls off to about 5%. I don't, I don't even know what it is on the weekends. But um, I've been, I think, because working with Christine, she's always been, um, she's pretty, um, cor she'll correct me. She, she catches me in my thoughts. She catches me when I try to overstep or try to not let her speak and things like she's made me very aware of the difficulties that she has as a woman. And, you know, when she wrote our, our a woman owned eight, a, she had to explain a lot of that. Cause she had to, you have to be socially, um, pre you know, prejudiced against socially. So she had to talk about a lot of those stories throughout her life. And, you know, it, it, it's made me more aware. So I'm, I think, pretty comfortable re regardless of the audience. Um, but that could be topic dependent for me. I, I don't know. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, if you're reading this book about the, the well-intentioned men, I'm sure I, I step on my own tongue. I probably say things that are biased, um, you know, sometimes. So I'm, I'm, probably, I'm gu as guilty as any of the guys of having a lot to learn. Well, it's awareness. And that's why this is all about a collaborative effort. It is all about having allies, having men who are allies, having men who want to be a part of the conversation. I shared a story with you about Jim Henry speaking at the breakfast, um, the keynote breakfast event at ISC West to Juliet Kayyem at the end of the session and being so impressed with not only what the dialogue was, but how it's opening up the conversation of, of more inclusivity in the industry. And that was a win to have somebody have a takeaway like he did at that event. That was a win to me. So it's just about having more conversations and getting, getting more men who understand the value in a collaboration. Because together, together we're gonna make our industry better. Together, we're gonna bring the next people into our industry who wanna roll up their sleeves and get involved and be doers and active with us and, and bring in the thought leadership that we need more of from, from a more diverse diverse group. So you know, together we're, we're having those conversations now and it's exciting to see what's about to come of it. I couldn't agree more. Maureen, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Uh, this is a, a good episode, it's a good topic. I intend to revisit it on this show. So we'll, uh, we'll get a checkup from you in a couple of quarters and see how the industry's progressing. That would be fantastic, Andrew. Awesome. Um, mahalo. <laughs> mahalo, thank you so much for joining us. Because security matters. Aloha.